Today we're going to use Tinkercad to make a snap fit connector so we can make prints larger than the bed size. So let's get cracking. Friends, this is Tinkercad.com. I simply choose sign in with Google. This is the Tinkercad workspace. If you click down here on designs, you can see everything you've made. If you want to make something new, which I do, you can simply hit create. We're going to do 3D design, but you can also learn circuits or code blocks. I'll make sure I have links in the description. This is the Tinkercad workspace. We build with solids. Right here is your file name. I'm going to call this snap fit and I'm going to put V2. Just like that, it's saved. I will show you that we can back up to the Tinkercad dashboard. Here is our project. Right now, there is no image. In a minute, there will be one. As you can see, this is where I was testing my design. To get back in, we're going to simply hit Tinker This. Now, my goal is going to be to make an awesome LED sign. We'll do that in a different video today, though. We're just going to make the snap fit. This is called the sketch tool. When you bring it out, you'll notice that it has a shadow that is 20 by 20. I am dropping it right in the center of that grid. Notice we've got a one millimeter nudge, so it's quite easy. This centers our design on this grid and it's super cool if you're ever tracing. I have got tons of videos about the sketch tool. I'll make the playlist up here. You can also use the bit.ly. I will also remind you of the sketch tool preview. It has animated videos and tons of cool things that'll help you get the most of this awesome tool. When you're done working with it, you can simply hit continue to sketch and go back to your building. So I am going to make a track. Once again, this is gonna be for LEDs. If I were really building this, I'd make it quite a bit higher to match the actual track. We're gonna do this nice and quick. I'm only gonna go seven millimeters high. Notice I'm going three millimeters over. I'm gonna come back down and I'm leaving three millimeters here. I'm gonna move over here and I'm gonna mess up just so I can show you how easy this is to edit. Notice this side is two and this side is three. If I double click, I can simply grab this whole line and move it over. If you make a mistake, you can do control Z. Check it out. I can also use the arrow keys to nudge it perfectly. Decide you want that to be four, click the line, move it up. Of course, you can also click on all these and check all the measurements of what you built. So this is gonna be our test track. Once again, I'm choosing three millimeters because I'm going to make a two millimeter tab to connect these together. Let's hit finish sketch and I'm gonna show you how this track works. I'm gonna flip it 90 degrees. If you stay in the center of this blue circle, it goes 22 and a half degrees at a time. If you hold down shift, it's 45 degrees at a time. That lays it the way I would want to print the track. Of course, I need to hit D so I can drop it to the work plane. And then we can simply stretch this as long as we want. I'm going to choose size 30. If we were really trying to print bigger than our bed, we would obviously use something quite a bit larger. Let's pick a different color just because this makes it a little easier to see. I'm going to make it the bright pink. All right, so let's build the tab. Notice I'm going right beside the end of this. We're lining up this edge right here. And we're going to go right there so that we can now pan over and build using these same lines. I'm gonna build off this end. This will be the tab that prints and sticks out. We're gonna start from the center and we're gonna go three over, one up. Now without clicking, I'm gonna go two over and three up. This is half of our dovetail. So our tab will have nice sharp edges. And then I'm gonna do the same thing across. Where that one is five, I want this one to be five, once again, two in, three down, and then boom, connect and connect. Of course, you can double check that it's right. We've got the four by 10. If we double click, you could go inside and edit it. I'm gonna get rid of these points right here by pressing number four and clicking and clicking to get rid of those. And finally hit finish sketch. That is our tab. The only thing we're gonna do is change the height to two because I want to make sure I leave some surface here for when the parts snap together. Now we're going to reuse that down here. Simply do control D shift nudge to move it way down. And then of course, we're going to line those up. We're going to select the two of them, choose L for a line, click on this spot right here. We want it to be at the back edge. And of course we want it to be centered, but it already was. Now we want this to be a hole, so we're going to switch it to a hole, and I'm going to make it a little bit larger for snapping in. To do that, we're going to simply double-click and edit the part. 
This is one of my favorite things. If we double click this, we're in edit mode and I'm going to click on this line and I'm going to move it 0.1 millimeters up. If I just tap the arrow, bingo, 0.1 larger. Now I can grab all of these parts. Notice I'm grabbing from here to here and I want to move out 0.1 millimeters. Once again, I'm going to grab all of these parts and I'm going to move out 0.1 millimeters. I have found that these numbers work with my printer. You may find that you want to do 0.2 on your printer. That's something you're going to have to test. Once I hit finish sketch, I'm also going to make this a tiny bit higher where this tab is going to stick up to. Because of the way I print this, there's going to be a little bit of stuff hanging down. So I'm going to do 2.15 for the amount that cuts out. Friends, that's the project. Select it all, control G to group. I'm gonna hit T for transparent so you can look inside it. You can see that we've got a hole where the other one of these is going to stick in. Let's quickly build a 90 degree turn for our track. We're gonna start by doing control D to duplicate and then shift nudge to move it forward. Now the track is trash, so I'm just going to ungroup it and I'm gonna delete the track piece but keep the tabs. Let's quickly set our nudge back to one millimeter. Now let's bring out another sketch tool. These will not line up right now, but they will when we're done. So I'm dropping it right in the 20 by 20 spot. If you really want that to line up initially, you can simply hit finish sketch, select those two, choose L for a line, and we want it to be centered and at the bottom edge. So now that'll be in the spot where we'll actually use it. Simply double click to get back in and edit it. Now to make our track, we're going to zoom out and we want it to bend 90 degrees. This time we're going to use the Bezier curve. Once again, we'll stay three millimeters thick. So I'm going to move up. I'm going to have it go straight for 15 millimeters. And then I'm going to have it go out here for 15 millimeters. And I'm going to click and bend to make that curve. Stick it out here, maybe to this spot. And then remember, it is a three millimeter thick wall. We're just building the wall. So I connect it back. Once again, move over the three millimeters, bend those so that they're the same or the same ish. You can be as precise as you want to be. And of course, straight and click. So that is my outside wall. Once again, we can double click. And then we can edit these. We have the option of smooth corners or we can break the handles. If you see these lines, it's a smooth corner. If you see the dotted lines, it is a broken handle like this one right here. Notice it does not affect the line below it. And of course, down here, this one, I'm going to hit number one. So it is a straight line. If you have this straight up, that makes it more likely to be the straight line you expect. So this is outside rail number one. I'm going to hit finish sketch. I need to make that same rail over here. Let's do control D and I'm going to do shift nudge to move it over to this side. So now we know that the three and the three match. We've just got to change this height. Check this out. If we double click this, we can double click to edit and I can simply select all of these pieces and I can nudge them down to the right location. So I know I want that to be right there. And of course, I want this to come back so those line up as well. Now we need to fix these curves. So let's start by just grabbing those two points and moving them out so they're straight. That'll probably be fine. And now I can click on this curve and we're just going to make it twist. So right now it is the smooth curve. Let's hit number three to break it. And I simply want that to look like that. Finally, click on this one. It already has the broken line and I can bring it down. And there is our track with a reasonably good curve. Of course, we can hit finish sketch and we need to set those heights to the right amount. I had chose seven and seven. We've got a little part here we'll fix in a minute. Right now, I'm gonna just rotate this the 90 degrees and let's move it out here to the end where it will snap on. And we need to quickly build the bottom of the track. Once again, just bring out another sketch tool, line it up with the 20 by 20. All right, so let's make this part super quick. I'm gonna start here with the line. 
Then I'm going to switch to number two to make a bezier curve. I do not have to follow it exactly. I just have to be inside the wall. Notice even though I'm in curve mode, I can just click straight and straight and straight until I get to that area and then make my bend. Of course, back to straight and finish it. Once we hit finish sketch, bingo, it's in place. You will need to adjust it to the three millimeter height. Now, because this part was straight, we know it is lined up. We do need to line up this part. Number one, we're going to hit W for work plane, and we're going to hit D to drop it to the correct location. Put the work plane back on the ground, and then I know that this 20 by 20 is correct, but we cannot align to those two shapes. So all we're going to do is bring out a cube that is lined up with the 20 by 20, so you can see that this grid matches. If we select those two and choose L for a line, we want this to be the boss, and we just need that tab to be in the exact center. Now we can hit delete. That is lined up where it's supposed to be. The hole is already where it needs to be. Let's just patch this little piece right here. If I double click to edit, what we've got is this here ended up being a curve. If we hit number one, it turns it back into the straight line for all those corners. We could have also just grabbed it like that and press number one as well. Once again, finish sketch. Now it looks nice and crisp. Let's select the whole thing and do control G to group. We have now got a solid part with a cutout piece for this will snap on and the tab for the next part. How cool is that? All right, so let's send our two parts to the 3D printer. I am going to send them separately. That way I can make multiples of this one. We're going to hit export STL. This is going to be snap fit V2, and I'm going to put 90 for the 90 degree curve. And then, of course, we need to click on the other one and export it as well. Export STL selected shape. This is snap fit V2, and I'll leave it as the straight version. Let's bounce to Bamboo Studio. Let's quickly hit add. I'm going to grab both parts. But I do not want single object multiple parts. I want them to be separate. That way I can right click on this one and clone it so we connect it to both ends. I'm going to grab everything using control A. Instead of green, I'm going to print them with my generic PLA. Also, let's do control A to grab them all quick and let's auto arrange them. With them lined up, I'm going to do 0.2 standard. Let's slice the plate and let's print the plate. Double check your colors and send it to the 3D printer. Of course, it bounces to the device menu, begins downloading. And once it's complete, we can hit play and monitor everything from afar. As you can see, I printed it twice. Let's test the fit. Of course, they snap in nice and easy. And bingo, we have got a super cool track made with snap fit connectors. And of course, because of the tutorial, if you find that the fit is not what you want, you've got complete control over adjustments. How cool is that? All right, friends, so now that you've got the technique, you can use that in any project that you want. If you find that your printer needs them more snug or more loose, you can also adjust the little dovetail however you need. Quickly wrapping up, a huge thank you to everybody that's supporting me via YouTube memberships, three different levels, and of course, one of my favorite highlights is you get early access to videos. Friends, also a super huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. Just past 100 members, you need to check out the awesome discussion area and of course you can learn more with the bitly up above or the link in the description finally friends i want to thank you for watching don't forget every time you hit that like button and share a video add a comment down below or hit subscribe you're helping hl mod tech get just a little bit bigger which absolutely makes my day friends have a glorious day and keep tinkering